Brother Russ come down. I said, listen, would you do me a favor? Would you pray about testifying? He said, what are you going to do? I said, listen, well, we don't want to know that you went up there to SL2 and all that. Just, I want you to share what God's wanting. See, God's been using Russ, and he's been sharing the Word of God. He's been sharing the Bible. He's been helping the church and the pastor up there. And there's more than Russ, and forgive me for saying this, there's more than Russ than just a pity story. There's more to Russ than just recovery. Y'all help me now? There's more to Russ than just a little thing. There's more to Russ than just a haircut. Amen? And not, not just, well, how's he doing? No, there's a lot more to Russ. And I said, you ain't even got to talk about nothing. Just make sure you introduce your wife. You see, your mama slid into the back back there, so you better recognize both of those ladies. But I said, I want you to share just what's on your heart. And I said, take about 10 minutes. And, uh, and listen, I appreciate it. So proud of it. Amen. And, and what a good time in our first service, being back in the door, for him just to be able to share something on his heart real brief tonight. So you mind the Lord. So I'm going to pray and uh, let him do that. And then when he's done, if y'all will, y'all sing a special. We'll dive right into the Word of God. All right, let's join together. Father, I love you. has always been my home. It's always nice to come back and I see these smiling faces and people that's believed in me and prayed for me. Um, Back last July, I decided to go to S2L. And the second day I was there, I was at church and the Lord got a hold of me and I gave my life to him and meant it and uh just been walking in obedience since then uh the first uh when pastor jason asked me to come up uh, the first scripture that came to me was john eight thirty six. it said if the son therefore shall make you free ye shall be free indeed and there's freedom in christ it says where the christ is there's liberty and when i started walking with god he started opening up doors for me i went up there just to go for 42 days i'll just go get away for a little while and god pressed on my heart to stay another 42 days and uh the possibility of internship came up. And so we go through a three-month process there. I did an intern letter. They voted me in. Uh, and I just started serving. It's kind of serving in the shadows, doing all the things that the ministry needs you to do. Uh, basically go for work, get this and get that. And, you know, it's not even a spiritual leading, but it's an example at that point. Uh, we all, he left us an example, so we have to be in a godly example. Um, as that went on, um, the opportunity came up. I met Brandy. That's my wife right there sitting in the four the six row. Can you say hey? <laughs> Uh, my mom's sitting back there so I went and uh, became on staff and I came down here uh, December 31st around there after Christmas and my dad passed away and I never knew what the peace that surpasses all understanding meant until that time came I knew where he was at I knew he was saved um, and that's ultimately up between him and God but I knew from his fruits that he was and um, just to be able to be strong for my family and that I was able to speak at his funeral um, it was just a, it was a blessing and God had his hand on me and I, and I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful to be up here. You know, a lot of the times when I was coming here before I was men, please, I was trying to please Pastor Jason and please people around me. I was one person at this church and I was another person when I was outside those doors. Now I wear one hat all the time and that's the hat of Christ. And I can be bold as a lion like the Bible calls me to do. Um, so I went through that and then me and Brandy, we got engaged and we got married and that's been a blessing. She is that Proverbs 31 verses 26 through 31 type of woman. And I'm thankful to have her that God prepared her for me. Um, <clears throat> and I had kids that I hadn't seen in five years and God reconciled that relationship. And I started seeing them a month ago, uh, right about this time. Uh, and they've all made a profession of faith and, you know, saved and they go to church out in Yakinville, a Bible believing church. Um, since I've been up there, I've been able to do this thing called Bible and a Barber. Now I do my talents to glorify God, not to glorify Russ, because Russ was his own God for a long time. Uh, and we serve a mighty God, and he does things. I've seen this story about you and, like, how he worked in your life. That, that fired me up. And um, <clears throat> so I do that Bible and a Barber thing. We have people come in from the community. I cut their hair. We have a topic, and we talk about, you know, the Bible and things men struggle with, things that I wouldn't have liberty to talk about here but things we can be with men and, uh, you know, help them out. And then on Wednesday, I teach class, and we go by seven principles. Um, so I teach about love or brotherly affection, different things to help men in recovery. Uh, and I have guys that I coach there. Uh, now I've got promoted, and I'm on the phone, so people calling in, and I, and I hear the desperation in mom's voice or sister's voice, and I can help them out and lead them into the right direction. God's everywhere. He's not just an S2L, but he uses that platform in a mighty way. I'm just thankful that I went, and uh, now I live up there. i got a wife up there, and there's Amish people everywhere up there, and they've got it figured out, right? <laughs> um, 
No, I'm just kidding you, but it's just been such a blessing to be there and to serve our, serve our Lord and uh, just be confident in Christ and be confident in my salvation. I don't ever want to be in that church pew question when the preacher's preaching whether I'm saved or not because I'm going to know that I know that I know. And your fruits will tell that and how you operate in your life. You always want to be the same person no matter if I'm Pastor Jason or the CEO of my place or my wife or whatever. She knows I'm the same at home, I'm the same everywhere. Um, and I just always want to be um, obedient to what Christ asked me to do and whatever he presses on my heart. Um, so it's just been um, such a blessing, and I know my mom can finally, be, she's always been proud of me, but like seriously proud of me, and to know that her son's walking with Christ and following his footsteps. And I'm just thankful to be up here tonight, and I really love each and every one of you. Old world has left.
faithful amen i thank god for that thank god for that good song the good reminder to be able to know that he's never going to change and i do thank the lord for that open your bible up tonight if you will uh, to a number of places uh, really we're going to end up landing in matthew 27 that's where we're going to spend a majority of our time uh, but of course i'm going to read a verse to you uh, out of second uh, chronicles chapter number seven and we're going to go back there and then we're going to go over to john chapter number 15 and then we're going to dive into matthew chapter number 27 so that's where we're going to end tonight i want to go back for just a moment if i could and just continue to allow the holy ghost to be able to plow this in our hearts to be able to speak to us and teach us i want to thank the lord for his faithfulness and i want to thank him for uh, just the way God continues to teach and during this time and uh, as we have looked into the scripture in Second Chronicles chapter number 7, how the Lord has taught me so much uh, to be able to understand that uh, in a difficult time, uh, I tell you, uh, I'm going to be quite frank with you, uh, I've, over the last eight weeks or so, uh, I have seen God uh, do some things and, and not just sinners' hearts and begin to change them and they get saved, but I've seen the Lord do some things in some that's been saved. I mean, I praise the Lord for that. And one of those has been my heart. And, uh, and I praise God that He's just continued to be able to work on us and, and will continue to work on us. But I want to just read these verses with you. And, and if you'll stay with me tonight, uh, I want to be able to tie a lot of this stuff together. And Lord willing, we'll just keep following the Lord. Amen. But the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter number 7, and I want to read two verses. Of course, these are the verses that we have read multiple times. The Bible says this, if I shut up heaven and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. There we are, right there. My people. So, Brother Jason, I sure do get tired of hearing these verses. Why? Why? I was talking to my daddy the other day. You ever talk to my dad on the phone? He, he ain't a preacher, but he sure preaches well, if you know what I'm saying. He tells me the same thing all the time. I hung up the phone. I said, there's going to be a day where I'll miss hearing that voice. And my dad can tell me the same thing all the time. What I've learned over eight weeks is the Lord has allowed me to sit down in Scripture and the Holy Ghost, my Heavenly Father. I haven't got tired of that same word that He's been speaking to me. And He says to my people, he goes further and he says, he ties them together. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves. Boy, I tell you, I, I've seen a lot of things. But I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of times before this time, uh, I've seen that uh, the people of this world can be arrogant. And I've seen that God's people can be arrogant. But I have seen some arrogant Christians over these last six weeks and eight weeks too. We want to know what God's doing. Well, I tell you, it makes it plain. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. I mean, listen, what must God do for us to realize we ain't got all the answers? No matter how much you know, no matter how much Bible we quote, no matter how long we've been saved, we don't have all the answers. And God wants us to not just teach and quote and preach it, but He wants us to be able to live every single day to trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean not to thy own understanding, in all thy ways, in all thy ways, in all thy ways, in all thy ways. ways. Acknowledge Him in the way you teach, the way you preach, the way your attitude, the way you speak, everything. The way you organize, the way you return, the way you live, the way you leave, the way you respond in everything. God wants us to lean upon Him. Let us humble ourselves. Boy, I tell you, God has taught us some things. Humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. Boy, if there's anything we as God's children need to do, not because it's a formality, not because it's just transition, not just because it's something that we do when we come to church. May we understand that if there's anything that we need more in our life in this day and hour, 
it is the opportunity and the privilege to pray the way that we should. And how do you get there? By being humble. When, you're in, when you and I are humble, we will pray the way we ought to pray. But people don't pray the way they ought to pray until they get humble. And here's the thing. You could talk to God and get on your knees and you could talk a lot, but I ain't talking about praying like that. I'm talking about getting down and talking to God, but being quiet and letting God talk to you. Listen to the Lord about what He's saying to do with your family and with your fam- family's friends and with your children and your wife and your husband. What to do with your church and your ministries. I mean, listen to God and pray and see. Until we lose the arrogance, we never pray the way we should. Yeah, you could talk and you could talk for an hour to God. But I'm talking about praying. Praying. Humble themselves and pray. Then he comes down to that part and he says, Seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. See, God gave us the procedure. Eight weeks we've been trying to figure it out. Everybody's trying to figure it out. And by the way, it's just been eight weeks that we've actually tried to start figuring it out. See, before that we just came to church. Before that, we just lived for Jesus. We sang in the choir. Not all of y'all. I'm just going to be honest with you, with me. I mean, there's a lot of things we can do because we do it. And sometimes we do it well. God's not interested in how talented we are and how many times we darken the door. He's not interested in how much we might know and how many times we can build a church. He's not interested in that. He's interested in how many times that we understand that we've been saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We were bought not with our own blood, but with the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and by that we must submit every single day and be humble humble not because I'm scared and I'm afraid but humble that the king of kings and the lord of lords you understand that the president might not have called you over the past eight weeks and and your friends might not have called you over the past eight weeks and and your boss might not have called you over the past eight weeks and your preacher maybe not even called you over the past eight weeks but i can promise you that every single day the holy ghost has been knocking on your heart that ought to humble us that the king of kings and the lord of lords he wants to talk to us And here we humbled that somebody like me, that God would want something to do with somebody like me. He goes on through this text and he begins to talk about the repentance. We went over to Luke chapter number 15 and we begin to look in this text about what true repentance looked like. We begin to look at how when you study it out where the Bible says that there was a certain man that had two sons, we, we see the connection, we see the family, we see the, the way that there is a, a connection between the father and the sons. The same way that if my people, if my people, which are called by, if my people, you understand, there's a connection in the New Testament about now a son, and the Bible says that he walked away, that he took his inheritance, that he went off into a far country. And the Bible says that when he came to himself, when he came to himself, literally he stopped in his tracks. And when he came to himself, that was a moment that shifted everything. That was a moment to begin to change everything. But see, that moment that came to himself, and you listen to me, don't ever get tired of hearing your daddy's voice. Listen, when God begins to help us, and He's telling us tonight, when He came to Himself, He never came to Himself until He got humble. Can I ask you something? What must God still do? Now that we're approaching June of 2020, for this country to humble itself the way it should. For churches to humble ourselves the way we should. For Christians to humble ourselves the way we should. What must God still do to humble us as men, leaders of our homes, leaders of our families, leaders of our wives, of our children? What must God do to humble us anymore? How are we responding? How are we responding? What must God do after these six to eight weeks 
What must God do to a wife, to a mom, to a lady, to a young adult? What must God do to get us humble? When you go in Luke chapter number 15 and verse number 18, he is literally reciting. And he says, I will arise. I go to my father's house. I mean, listen, he's already experiencing humility. He's thinking, I haven't even talked to my daddy yet. And I, I just, I know that when I get there, I don't deserve his forgiveness. I don't deserve his love. I don't deserve his goodness. So he's beginning to find himself in a place of humility. Oh, listen, that's what we need tonight. It's to stay humble no matter how much God uses the choir. And no matter how much God blesses the ministry and how much we grow and how much we do and we provide and we reach out in this community. No matter what we do, may we come to a place where we understand every single day we need the Lord and we must stay humble. Trust the Lord with everything. We don't deserve His goodness. We don't deserve His mercy. You say, well, we deserve it now because of the Lord Jesus Christ. I understand that. But if you keep telling that to yourself, you're going to feel like that somebody's entitled to be able to receive what you've received. But remember this. Your entitlement don't come because of what you and I have done. Preach all. Preach all. Preach all. Your entitlement comes because of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's because of Him and His blood that He died on the cross of Calvary. Every day we get up, we ought to thank Him. No matter what kind of rain comes and storm comes and battles come and fire comes, no matter what we face every single day, we must thank the Lord for everything that He does. He loves us. And here He found Him. He said, I, I have sinned. I am no more worthy, he says. I am, make me as one of thy hired servants. Do you see the humility in this repentance? See, what you see here is this, this is the point of repentance. It leads to repentance. This is what true repentance looks like. When you come to yourself because you're so humble that you realize I don't deserve what I got. I don't deserve to come through what I've been through, and I sure don't deserve where I'm going. Because I know if it was not for the grace of God, I would not be where I am. And every single day, new mercies, new mercies, new mercies, new mercies, the Bible says every day, new mercies we receive of the Lord. And that ought to be new praise, new worship, every single day. And then he comes down, he says, I'll go to my father's. The Bible says in verse number 20, he arose and he come. You know what that means? That's that Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse number 14. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek my face. See, now true, true repentance, you seek the face of God. You don't seek the approval of the church. You don't seek the approval of the preacher. And you don't seek the approval. Because if that's the case, all you got to do is hide it from them. Y'all help me preach now. Tell me. I'm telling you, he's talking to his people. He's talking to his people. He says you got to come to a place where you desire to seek the Lord. If you truly are repenting, then you must seek the Lord's face. He goes further. He says, I came to himself, and he says, I have sinned. He turned from his wicked ways. And the Bible says in verse number 20, he said, when he was a great way off, his father saw him. Then will I hear from heaven. Aren't you glad that when you do it God's way, you always get what God says? Listen, we want healing, we want, we, we, want, we want security, listen, we want strength, listen to me, we want a future, we want a place for our babies and for our children, we want a place for this community, just all we got to do is keep doing it God's way, I don't tell you, I don't know the next ep epidemic, I don't know the next pandemic, I don't know the next virus, I don't know when World War III is going to come, I don't know who the next president is going to be, I, I don't know who the next youth pastor is going to be, I don't know what's going to happen two months from now, I I don't know what the bank account's going to look like and how many people's going to get saved. I don't know what's going to happen, but what I do know is this, is God made it very plain that I will heal their land and I will hear them and I will forgive their sin. God said, I will, I will, I will. But this is what you must do and that is humble yourself. What's the remedy, Brother Jason? Humble ourselves every day. Humble ourselves every day. God says we're going to do it this way. Praise God, I'm going to get up and I'm going to tell you this is what God's going to tell us to do. God might tell me tomorrow to do something different. You know what i got to do? Hey, guess what? God just changed the plan. You know what I've learned? I don't always agree because I don't always understand. But I must choose to submit. The same way that you 
and everybody else, we don't always agree. and We might not always understand. But if we follow the Lord, we must choose to submit. It's hard to do, isn't it? It's hard to do when you don't see. It's hard to do when you don't understand. And it's especially hard to do sometimes when you don't agree. And we're not talking about agreeing. And by the way, hear me clearly as I say this. Not based upon experience. Not even based upon just what the Bible says. You say, wait a minute, Brother Jason. Well, let me tell you something. You can quote verses all day long, but until you get a rhema word, you can't explain that. What will the rhema word ever contradict what the Word of God says? It will never contradict what the Word of God says. But sometimes we can use verses and we can twist it and make ourselves feel confident in our stand. God says, if my people will humble themselves. <laughs> Amen, preacher. You want to fix your marriage? Just stay humble. You want to fix your home? Stay humble. You want to build a ministry for the cause of Christ and reach people to see them get saved? Stay humble. That's the answer. True repentance. The Bible says that he comes and his father sees him away off. He says, and then he answers. Say with me. The Bible says, notice this. Verse 22. Bringing the best robe, the ring, the shoes. I will forgive. How many of you are thankful for forgiveness tonight? Hey, Amen. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. But then he says this. He says, kill the fatted calf. In other words, there's going to be a party. So God just simply says, I'm going to heal their land. Everything's going to be all right. We're going to move on. That is a sign of true repentance. But there's a point of true repentance. And what is it? Notice when he came to himself. Amen? I want to ask you this question. I'm going to move on tonight. Get to what I feel like the Lord wants me to get to. When's the last time you had a came to yourself moment? When's the last time you you had that turning point in your life and the Lord took the reins and and I'm not talking about nothing awful. I'm not, I'm not talking about nothing that's terrible. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I, I'm not talking about you're, you're filthy, you're wretched, you're rotten. I'm, I'm not wanting you to leave disgusted and mad at yourself and mad at your spouse. That is not what I'm saying. I'm talking about, listen, one of the greatest things that you and I as a child of God get to experience is not just salvation, but that the King of Kings is standing in our place and we can experience forgiveness. Do you understand how important that is tonight? Do you understand how much we must rejoice tonight? And what's amazing is God can forgive us, but we can't even forgive each other. Over the last eight weeks, I've had the privilege of calling and talking to a lot of people, writing cards. I've learned a lot about different things, things that I didn't intentionally say or do, but things that might have happened or actually felt. Just little things. There's been conversation and there sure has been a lot of decisions and there's been a lot of different opinions. But you know what I've learned? Simple I'm sorry don't even work for people anymore. I'm not saying that negative. And what amazes me is God forgives us every day. Are you hearing me? Do you understand that if it was not for Christ, God could send us to hell right then and there? I mean, I'm talking about right there. How can we not forgive when God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us? How can we walk away with so much resentment and hatred in our hearts? We ought to repent. Turn over to Matthew 27. So if that's what true forgiveness looks like, or true repentance looks like, I want you to look at what false repentance looks like. False repentance. I want you to notice with me, start reading in verse number one. The Bible says this. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him. 
The Bible says in verse number 3, you notice this, Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself, and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is it to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed, and listen to this, and went and hanged himself. Notice in verse number 3, if you will, the Bible says literally, notice this, that he repented himself. If Luke chapter number 15 is a clear illustration and example of true repentance, then Matthew 27 is an example of false repentance. See, just because you say that you're sorry don't mean that you're really repenting. Are y'all with me? I, I wrote these things down. Stay with me if you will. The first thing I'd say to you is false repentance it has no follow through. If you're taking notes, you can write it down. I got a lot of sub points. But false repentance, it has no follow through. What do you mean by that? Well, let's go back to what true repentance looks like. True repentance is the prodigal son that comes and he says, I will go, I will arise and go to my father's house. Well, here's what happens. It's that emotional stir. It's that thought process that says, I will arise and go, but you never turn back to go back home. See, false repentance has all of these different motives and it has these different thoughts and it has a lot of different speech, but there's never a follow-through. There's never a follow-through. You never move on. You never do anything. And the Bible says, notice this, when you don't follow through, when it is not true repentance, when there is still bitterness and anger and there's still resentment in your heart or somebody else's heart and there's a problem, what does it lead to? Verse number three, he hanged himself. Physical or spiritual suicide. How many great men and women do we know tonight that God has limited them right now because they still have some kind of resentment in their hearts and they've almost literally committed spiritual suicide. Think about it. What's humbling is, could it not be you and me? Y'all help me tonight. You understand God's taking us somewhere. Listen, God's doing something in our church. God's speaking to His people, folks. God's speaking to me. God's speaking to you. True repentance is somebody that follows through. False repentance is somebody that does it. They stop and they say, I will arise. I will go. I will not do that anymore. I will not date that person anymore. I will not fall to that temptation anymore. I will not do this anymore. But yet, though they say it, they never, never do it. And then the tragedy comes. You have a verse number three. Somebody hangs himself. And you know what happens? The people around them are affected because they really want what's best for them. False repentance literally comes to a place where there's no follow through. And here's why. Because they never start back. They never move away. They never go back to what it was. They never move away from the sin. False repentance will never move away from the sin. They never follow through. So what happens is they have worldly sorrow. They never have godly sorrow. They never have a, a heavenly sorrow, if you will. They always have a worldly sorrow. And literally just coming to the place where every single day where they just say that I'm sorry, but they're truly not sorry because here's what happens. They never really turn to God. They never really reach to God. They never really stop and have an attendance uh, or attention to be able to move forward. They never have an intention to stop. It's worldly sorrow. It sounds good. It makes the wife feel good. It makes the husband feel good. It makes the preacher feel good. It makes the brother or sister in Christ feel good. But there's no intention. God help us. Look up here. Woo. God help Haynes Baptist Church to embrace preaching that's about repentance because we want to live it. We might not practice it perfectly, but we want to live it. There's nothing bad about it. Do you understand? There's nothing bad about repentance. There's nothing bad about repentance. 
We ought to celebrate. We ought to rejoice. We ought to embrace. I mean, listen, must Brother Russ go through two years, three years, four years, and all these programs for us to spell? No. Listen, one step is all it takes to get back where you need to be with God. But the church has said, well, I'll wait till he moves to Tennessee, and I'll wait till he graduates, and I'll wait till he gets married, and I'll wait and see if he really reconciles with his family. See, the church typically, not Haynes, y'all stay with me. We're not fixing problems. God is fixing us. Help me now. Help me. God is fixing us. God is speaking to us. So many people want to be proven. Now, repentance don't teach that. When they let go. Listen, God, when God lets go, He lets go. When you repent and you turn and you reach for God and you stop, I'm telling you, true repentance will get you where you need to be with God, even though sometimes the church and everybody else don't understand it. May we be a church that understands repentance. May our first question be, well, such and such happened to so-and-so. Oh, well, what did, what, did, what did they say? Or what did they do? What did his wife do? What did, her, what did their friends do? What did their children say? What did their mom and dad say? What did the preacher do? See, those are our first questions. Our first question, listen, as a child of God, hear me, hear me, hear me, should be this. Did they repent? When somebody says yes, we all say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Bring him the, hey, bring him the best robe. Put a ring on the finger. Put shoes on the feet. Praise God. Kill the fatted calf. Let's rejoice. That teenager came back home. That, that sinner came back. Listen, thank God they're doing well. They reconciled that marriage. Everything's great. Let us rejoice. But yeah, we don't do that. Worldly sorrow. What does worldly sorrow do? Well, the Bible says he hung himself. So you know what that says? I wrote this down. This is a sub point. Worldly sorrow produces repentance that results in resentment and not cleansing. Worldly sorrow, when you're, when you're sorry like the world is, it produces a repentance that what happens is there's resentment. There's this underlining thing that's never really resolved. Y'all help me preach. We preach this every Sunday. Huh? There's a lot of division right now. Not amongst the world. Not amongst just God's people. Hey, but listen. And I know this is live stream. You be careful because even the devil loved to split up Haynes Baptist Church. And I'm telling you, friend, I see it from every angle. I see it from good people, good people, good preachers, good laymen, good, good people that love the Lord and teach the Word of God and people that sing in the choir. I've seen it from every angle. And the devil wants to divide. He wants to divide and see true repentance. When we get to that place and we're really humble, everything is fine. But when it's not what it needs to be, there's a resentment. What happens? Just let God do it God's way. Brother Shannon can do me wrong, or Miss Ashley can do me wrong, or Miss Cheryl can do me wrong, Brother Sam can do me wrong. Listen, they do, listen. The Lord has to take care of a lot. That's not for me to fix. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Render not evil for evil. That's what the Bible says. We're to be in this thing for the glory of God, lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ, praising His name. Hallelujah. Amen. Rejoice. Kill the fatted calf. Amen. Yeah, but did you know what they, I mean, brother, I, quit asking questions that don't matter. Did they repent? Quit being the oldest brother. Woo! Amen. He comes back in and says, wait a minute. I've been sitting here. I've been working. Luke chapter number 15. I've been laboring. I didn't go off in the far country. God, God help us not to be the older elder brother. Just say, praise God, he repented. Hallelujah, he repented. Let's just keep moving forward. Amen. But we're so worried about what happens and what's done and what's not done. Brother Boyd Poplin used to say it this way. So they get saved, they'll want to come to Sunday school. Well, I'll, I'll make that go for that, that what I wasn't throwing those stones. Everybody's all right. Y'all take a breath. <gasps> take a breath. It's okay. Breathe. It's fine. Everybody all right? But I'll say this. If they truly repent, you, you ain't, you ain't got to seek it out. You'll see in the fruit of their life. Like, bro, like Brother Russ said a while ago. Amen. Hey, listen, man, he's, he's trying. He's, I mean, trying, you know what I'm saying? I, I get knocked down. I'm sure it's not perfect. 
He's probably been accused of things that he really done. He's probably had thrown things, stuff thrown his face over the past couple years that's really been true. But the truth, truth be told, listen, when you come to that place and you're humble, you're just like, look, you know what? It's fine. I'm just going to keep on moving for God. It's the glory of God. Hallelujah. Amen. You might be right, but I just got to keep doing what God wants me to do. Let, it, let us be a church. You hear me? Let us be a youth ministry. Let's be a singles ministry. Let us let's be a young adult ministry. Let's be a couples ministry. Let's be a, a choir. Let us be a church. Let's be a deacon board. Let us be financial folk. Let us be Sunday school teachers. Let, it, let us be God's people that celebrate and rejoice when people repent. Just say, praise God. Praise the Lord. Y'all stay with me. I need to hurry. Y'all keep your, keep your pen handy, okay? Worldly sorrow produces regret, not relief. He's just subpoints. You say, where'd he get that? He hung himself. <laughs> you, you know, I, I see a lot of people sometimes that they'll have regret, but they never find peace. There's a lot of people, and not just a lot of people, sometimes it's us. We'll come to the altar, and we'll have regret that we messed up. But then we go home, we wonder why we never have peace at night. It's because here's what happened. We, re- we had regret. Listen to me. We had regret that we messed up. We had regret that we took in that temptation. We had regret that we chose to partake in the things that we've done. We had regret, but we never have peace. We say, why don't I have peace? Because it was never true repentance. See, true repentance gives you the peace of God. Everything's all right. That's where you can go back up. I know I can't shake hands with nobody because you know all the stuff going on. That's where you go up and say, hey, brother, love you, appreciate you, God bless you. You can still talk. You can still communicate. There's still peace. There's no all in your heart. Instead of steering away from that brother or sister. Y'all help me. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes. I'm telling you, listen, when we really repent, get things right, we can look at people. We can know it's all right. We can shake hands and fellowship. We can, we can break bread together. We can go to church together. All that. Listen, when you truly are walking with the Lord the way you should, you find relief. There's peace. And please, don't ever try to justify just because you can pull, plug, overspeak, or overquote the Bible. Don't ever think you're right and somebody else is wrong when you don't have peace. See, you do it in Jesus. Jesus can do anything. Jesus can put a marriage back together. Jesus can build the walls that, I mean, that's been torn down. Jesus can tear the walls down that's been built up. Amen. He said, which way we need to go with it? He'll take care of it all. Amen. He can restore joy. There's no regret. Stay with me. Worldly sorrow has anger. Anger. And not brokenness. Worldly sorrow has anger. And not brokenness. If Judas would have been broken, he would have never hung himself. He was angry. He was angry that he was wrong. And he even said this was innocent blood. Sometimes the hard part's not forgiving others. Look up here. Sometimes the hard part's forgiving yourself. It's hard for us to do. But there's power, listen to me, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's power. In the name of Jesus, right? Amen. Y'all wanted me to sing that song. I just can't sing it. But there's power. Amen. True repentance has a desire to walk with God and not just end it all. True repentance. True repentance will have you sin no more and not commit suicide. John chapter number 8, woman caught in adultery. What did Jesus do? He said, the first of you without sin, you cast the first stone. But he looked at her, he said, go and sin no more. Listen, she didn't try to kill herself. She just went on and didn't sin no more. He didn't condone her sin, but he also didn't condemn the sinner. Amen. True repentance. She said, I'm sorry. Go ahead, it's all right. Just don't do it no more. Oh my, can you believe Jesus just did that? The Son of God? Yes, it's called grace. It's called grace. It's called grace. Amen. 
Let me give him a second point and then I'll, I'll close. False repentance not only not has any follow through, but false repentance also has remorse that's mistaken for repentance. False repentance shows remorse that's mistaken for repentance. He said in this, and he, he repented himself in verse number three, and he even said there was innocent blood, but then he hung himself. Here's the thing. He felt bad, but he never changed. Listen, listen. He felt bad, but he never changed. And can I tell you something? That's for us to be able to take two and remember. But when you're thinking about somebody else, remember this. People might not be changing as quick as you want them to. But if they're trying to change, it takes a while to be able to stand up on some weak legs. Can I get a witness right there? Don't write them off just because they fall down when they first get up. Y'all help me tonight. Sometimes it just, it happens. You ever see them, them all weak knees, they get up and they fall? Hey, sometimes it takes some time. And I don't have time to go through flip, uh, Psalms 23. Can I, can, can, will, you, will you please come to the piano? I need to be done. I'm trying to be early. Psalms 23, the Lord talks about them sheep. I've heard Scotty say this. I've talked about it, read books about it. Them sheep where they fall over, you know, they have so much that's on them. They've never been, they've never been trimmed, never been sheared, I guess is what it is. They say that when those shepherds get those sheep, they have to, they have to rub their legs to get the feeling back in them. Because when they get up, they can't stand on their own. So the shepherd has to literally help and rub their legs. You know what we need in Haynes Baptist Church? Not choir people. Not new preachers. We don't need positions. We need some people, and please don't take this being silly. We need some people that are able to rub some legs to help some people stand. Amen. Say it's all right. And hey, can I tell you something? Last time I checked, when you get down this low, you might get dirty. You got to be willing to get dirty if you're going to be that kind of person. You got to be willing to get low. Y'all with me? Everybody, everybody's not going to be where we, need, where we think they need to be. You got to be willing to get low and say, it's all right. We'll stay right here until you start feeling those legs again. You start walking again. There'll be some mamas get happy, some daddies get happy. Y'all help me now. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm finished. I got three questions. Number one, have you repented? I'm not just talking about being saved. Have you repented? Number two, do you repent the way you should? And number three, I'm done. Tonight, listen to me. Will you repent? Hey, listen, I, God's taught me a lot. God's, man, I tell you, God's been so good. I, I, I know there's a lot of stuff that has been crazy over eight weeks, but can I tell you something? I needed these eight weeks. I did. I really did. And I, I hope and I pray that we just listen to the voice of God. God has revealed some things to me and shown me some things that I needed to learn. And the question is, will you repent? Will, will you and I be willing to say, no matter how good we think we got it, we still listen for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. All of sin. And can I tell you something? When Jesus looks at you, if you're saved, He don't see that no more. But can I tell you something? That verse still applies. All of still sin to come short. Of, you're still short of the glory of God without Jesus. So just because you're saved, you're still short. Of, in other words, your best living in your flesh is still short of the glory of God. What do you do? One step to the Lord. Now I want to ask you this invitation tonight. And of course, you need to come and pray.
pray by yourself or family. Or maybe just pray where you are. That's fine too. Maybe, maybe God, don't forgive me for what I've done. But maybe, Lord, forgive me for what I didn't do. Forgive me that I didn't call brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so. Forgive me that I, I brought grief on their heart. Listen, some of you got Sunday school teachers and ministry leaders that's been over you. And you don't realize that you, not intentionally, you might have brought grief in their life. Or the Bible says that you ought not to do that. Obey those that have rule over you. They've been wanting you to come to church and they've been wanting to be able to help you and they've been wanting to encourage you. They've been investing in you. And, and, and maybe you've just been steering away from them. Listen, you, you ought to just be able to say, God, Will you forgive me of not the things that I did do, but the things that I didn't do? Not only have I not been where you wanted me to be and done what you wanted me to do, but I have brought grief. I have grieved the spirit of people, listen, that's watched out for my soul. I'm done. Listen, listen. Over eight weeks, I'll say this to you, I have dealt with more people that has had opinions than I have that's been concerned about sinners. And I know people's trying to help, but you know what it does? It grieves my spirit. It does. And I'm thinking, man, if we just be as excited about loving people and calling our church family, loving sinners, just think of what this church, this local church would be. So anyway, I just want to take a moment and you stand to your feet. First invitation. Go ahead, stand to your feet. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Be not, if you need to come tonight, you come. If you just need to stay where you are, stay where you are. But I do ask you this one thing. Will you think of one person that maybe tonight just needs a little bit of encouragement? Maybe, maybe, maybe something's come across your mind or out your, your lips that says something like this. Well, they said they were sorry, but look at what they're doing now. Maybe say, God, give me the right heart. Let me not judge them. Or let, let me get out of the way and let you do what you do best. Just mind the Lord just for a moment. Just pray. And church, I'm telling you, we do it God's way. We'll get to where God's trying to take us. If my people, amen, if my people, that's us. Our Father, Lord, I love you. It is a joy and a privilege to be able to know that you've tuned in. And I pray that today that the word of God that was shared will be a blessing to you. If somehow, some way that the Lord has spoke to your heart and maybe you're uh, sitting where you are and you don't know for sure that you're saved by the grace of God and you've ever trusted Jesus Christ as a personal Savior, then I want you to know that the Word of God says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible makes it very plain, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You say, how do I get saved? You have to trust in Christ and Christ alone. Repent of your sin and then know as the Bible says where Jesus says, I am the way. And I pray that today that that will be your desire to be able to seek out for the Lord Jesus Christ, to be able to trust him as a Lord and Savior. If you do that today and you repent of your sins and you take him as your Savior, would you do us a favor and contact our church office at 336-788-0551? We would love to be able to speak with you. We would love to be able to encourage you, maybe be able to help you find a local church no matter where you are today, and maybe even possibly disciple you. So we want to say thank you so much, and we are definitely going to be praying for you and this ministry that our church has. If you know you're saved and maybe the Lord spoke to you in a different way and there's something heavy on your heart, again, that same number, if you can contact us, we'll be so thankful to be able to reach out and be able to speak with you. But again, on behalf of the church and myself, thank you so much and may God bless you.